I am in 509. Going up the application. Five one. Yes, copy that one. to indicate that we are arguing the application dated the 2nd of October with the Father of Gravity Lordship having been filed this afternoon through the court's email. The Lordship from the onset with heavy heart Lordship that we have moved you through these mechanisms. And that the Lordship, my submissions are the submissions of my client, and that I'm just a vessel for putting a approach <laughs> my client's case. The Lordship is a notice of motion that seeks the recusal of this bench. The same Lordship is supported with an affidavit and an extra. Equally, the Father of Hidabi is supported by two annexes. In my submission to Lordship, I will heavily rely on the facts contained therein. The 22nd of October, the Lordship is married. I'll begin by indicating and relying on the judicial service code of conduct and the ethics regulation. 2020, and I draw the attention of the court to Regulation 47. Regulation 47, your Lordship, states that a judicial officer may recuse himself or herself in any proceedings in which his or her impartiality might reasonably be questioned, where the judicial officer, one, is a part of the proceedings, B, was or is a material witness in the matter in controversy, C, has personal knowledge of these treated uh, evidentiary facts <laughs> concerning the proceedings, he has actual bias or prejudice concerning a party, he has personal interest or is in relationship with a person who has a personal interest in the outcome of the matter, F has previously acted as, as counsel, for a party in the same proceedings. G is precluded from hearing the matter. H, a member of the judicial officer family, has economic or other interest in the outcome of the matter in question. A refusal by a judicial officer shall be based on specific grounds to be recorded in writing as part of the proceedings. Your Lordship, it is my client's the petitioner's case that this bench should recuse itself on the ground contained therein. Permit me to begin by indicating that yesterday when the court was delivering its ruling, it indicated actual bias on the part of the parties before you Yoloshi. The petitioners were condemned in a wholesale in disparaging language coming from the bench, a language that indicated prejudice or bias on the part of the petitioners. It was indicated by the, the bench in Lordship that despite the heavy submissions, the authorities that we quoted, we quoted 
you are not addressing the bench, but addressing the gallery. It is so prejudiciology that such perception on the part of the petitioners culminated into the court not even taking note of most crucial issues that we had submitted on. For example, despite the, 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 the appeal that is now being launched, the court failed to take into not, uh, uh, notice of the question of delegated authority. It is to consider submissions in logic that had it not been for the bias and the prejudice that the court has on the part of the petitioners, such would not have escaped the mind of the court. The Lordship further, the court made further remarks that they take great exceptions to the remarks of the petitioners. <laughs> when the court indicates that they take great exceptions to the remarks of the petitioners, it's a prima facie indication that the court has descended, descended into the arena of dispute and that the court therefore becomes or takes a defensive approach in the manner in which the prosecution of the case is being conducted. Your Lordship, a judge must at all particular time be a solemn person, slow to anger, and of good temperament. Your Lordship, a statement indicates that the court has taken a position as against the respondents, the, the petitioners. And the position is prejudicial to the petitioners and erodes their confidence to continue appearing and making submissions before this court. It was the observation of these honorable court lordships that my client indicates that the court made further findings that the petitioners were not pursuing the urgency of the applications. What a reasonable man, a bystander, a fair-minded person, listening to these statements, internalizing them, will come to a conclusion that the court has taken a hard position on or against the petitioners. The test of a fair-minded person, your lordship. My lord, we really need to intervene, but my That's colleague, if he is added time for it, so that. let him tell you how yes, the ruling you issued would be a basis for an application that was out long before that ruling. You know, she, if he may be patient, he'll have the, his chance to bite the cherry and respond in that manner he so thinks that he should. You know, she, the application has also indicated that Justice E. Ogona is closely associated with his spouse who serves in the Water Kenya Towers Agency. The environment of our clients, you know, is that this is a matter that ought to have been disclosed at the inception of the proceedings. Let, let, me, let, me, let me get you right. You, you mean the judge is closely associated with what? <laughs> 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 so that the court may not again misquote me. The Lordship, the spouse of his Lordship, one Florence or Lord Auma. Did you depend to that issue? Yes. There's a disposition of that Yes, there's a disposition of that issue. That Florence is the wife? Yes, there is. Paragraph? Yes, paragraph. Paragraph 13 of the supporting affidavit. As read with 
paragraph 11 of the Father of David. She holds a position in the Kenya Water Towers Agency, an appointment that was done pursuant to the Gazette Notice number 7515 of 2013 for and on behalf of the presidency by its your final year. The Lordship, it may be, it will go on record that the six respondents who initiated or made this appointment is a party in these proceedings and that the parties no, my lord, that's not what I'm not, not, not giving you rights, and I'm sorry for that. Where are you lost, my lord? Yeah. Uh, if I'm looking at the same document as you, yes. the Gazette Notice 7515 was issued on the 7th day of June 2023 by Soipan Tunya. That's correct. Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change, and Forestry. That's correct. The sixth respondent in this proceedings is who? He's a the president. Then, where is the next one? I'll, I'll get there. I'll get there. You know, the cabinet under the constitution is constituted of the president, and the cabinet secretary is appointed there rather, and the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. That Siopan Tuya is an agent of the presidency. Your Lordship, one of the issues that was before the impeachment was that the deputy president, the petitioner here, indicated that Kenya is a shareholding country. There are shareholding agreements before you, and that Positions either in parastatals or corporations were to be shared in accordance with that share agreement. Well, that, that is the reason why his client got impeached. That is not the reason. You will be given an opportunity to respond. Even if you are eating, Mr. Yamon, take your call. Do not ship. <coughs> It is by client submissions that Florence Auma Holwood may have been a beneficiary of that shareholding. Your Lordship, finally, Your Lordship, we have. Just a minute. It is extremely unfair and unjust, especially for an advocate to mislead or what you are saying to play to the gallery. Can you read paragraph? 12 of the affidavit so that he does, he does no, 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 no. yes let's hear it from him where he says that the said board is chaired by the president who has so can he kindly do it properly so that you don't try to hire no, 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 no. Your Honor, the truth is your leadership and my lords they will have time as you say no. to respond and say all these things if he's saying nonsense they'll stand up and say so but this constant interruption is intended to derail this year. Let them respond when the time comes. Oh, yes. And we are going and we have all the condescending nature of the respondents. Yeah. Everybody here has been instructed by a client either to speak sense or nonsense. <laughs> so that being the case, the condescending attitude is completely objectionable. And everybody should take their seat and use their time with the sense. If sense can only come from them, they do it during their time. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Can I finish my well, Lord, may I be protected by my application? And the rest will be granted. Let's, let's finish what I was saying. You will have your time. I know I will have my time. But please, this is the application being presented. Let's not have other things. It has been served upon this. I'm not accepting. 
Just, just one thing. Your Honor, oh. if I'm allowed to just say just, something. Just, 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 just. <laughs> applicants finish their case and then people will respond. Because this interjection is just going to affect the conduct of the proceedings. It's very unfair. Let everybody have a chance. Each person has 10 minutes, others have 5 minutes. Let them utilize their time. But these objections in between is unfair and it's affecting the flow. We conduct this proceedings in an orderly manner. As Professor Dick Bugai used to remind us when we were in school, to be an advocate, you are a superior mortal. Can you just be slightly superior and deal with this thing in an intelligent way? Mr. Adakwa, you are really entitled to compute. I'm also obliged to ask you. It may be noted that, Mr. Belochi, that the chair of this board is directly appointed by the president, the six, the six respondents in this case. Your Lordship, may I submit again that the perception out there is that this bench has been constituted for a particular purpose. And that the bench is just a mere conveyor belt, and that the parties herein will not have the chances to have justice of their case being dispensed. Your Lordship, I have annexed a tweet by senior counsel, Ahmed Nassim, annexed in our affidavit at paragraph 12, and I wish to read that tweet, Your Lordship. Ahmed Nassim, Your Lordship, is a senior member of this bar, a senior counsel, and your Lordship, here it goes. The conservatory orders will be discharged by the three judge bench, latest by next week, if not by Friday. Even as we approach you, your Lordship, the perception out there is that this bench is part of the conspiracy. I'm agnostic. Is not the law. Your Lordship. He speaks not to the law. Ahmed Nasir has also an affidavit. He's not a witness, my lord. How does Ahmed Nasir, and we have 64 senior counsel, how does Ahmed Nasir, how can his tweet inform submission before this court? May I answer that, Your Lordship, to the good professor, that we are speaking about perception. The standard of a bystander, the reasonable man, a fair-minded man in the status and the character of a senior counsel, Ahmed Nassim says, and the president's lawyer says, we cannot receive justice. That is the standard. Ahmed Nassim says that this court will quash. Mr. Chairman, you can have your time to respond. No, but the point is, he then speaks in your favor. Yes. that line. Let him respond. You will not teach me how to submit. You will pick the line that is so wish. For me, I am saying, Your Lordship, that the perception out there is that this bench has been constituted as a conveyor belt. Finally, Your Lordship, this court will remember that on the 16th of October, we moved the court for a mention on the 18th. The court declined to grant that mention and slated our file to be mentioned on the 28th, 29th of October. But they were, when they were moved by parties in these proceedings, the court was generous and gracious enough even to sit on a weekend, to sit on a Saturday. Noting that we were before you, you selected our matter for the, for the 29th, and never saw the agency. Your Lordship, how can a fair bystander be convinced that this court will dispense with substantive justice? How can it be said that this court 
is impartial. You know, she, the question of a spouse being linked to a, a judge, as indicated by rules um, 47, is of paramount importance and something that cannot be ignored. Why did the court disclose to us? Why did the court conceal? If the court can conceal such kind of apparent evidence, what else is it capable of concealing? Your Lordship, permit me to indicate that in our affidavit, that we wish to expand paragraphs <coughs> Paragraph 16 of our affidavit, supporting affidavit, will not rely on it. And paragraph 10 of the same affidavit will not rely on the same. But the standard your lordship is that of a bystander. Having as he spoke, and he has a following of over 1 million on his Twitter handle, that is the perception has been created to the Kenyans that this bench, one, is a conveyor belt, two, it is considered for a particular mission, three, it's part of the conspiracy. Your Lordship, we urge you to uphold our application and grant the prayers sought. Your Lordship, my learned friend, Mr. <coughs> Masharia, will highlight on the authority, with the, uh, with the authority in support of my submissions and those of today. On <laughs> paragraphs 10 and 16, if I had from yes, of, of people supporting affidavit. That's correct. I don't know whether we can do that to all submissions. You cannot expunge a paragraph from an affidavit as it is evidence before the court, and it has to be considered. It has to be challenged in all ways. Number two, if you expunge paragraph 16, can you come in the response, please? I may, yes. but yes, just if, if you expunge 16, I have a problem with that. There is no application before you. If you expunge paragraph 16 from the affidavit, there is no application has been added to you. So we need, we need all this clarification. Let, let's not take things lightly. Yes, your Lordship, yes, it is true that the paragraph that I seek to expand is paragraph 16. Paragraph 16 of this affidavit. Who's who's affidavit? The way the the applicant's affidavit. That is uh, Obuli Namenya. My lord, uh, permit me the Marks, my lord, uh, I mean, because we have to be fair to the court, my colleague has to be candid and confirmed to the court. The reason is we drawing that paragraph 16 is because the claim there is factually false. Because he can just withdraw and leave the world thinking. Can you read it? The paragraph one. Your Lordship, are you having the same appraisal? Read the paragraph ten, which we have to draw and paragraph sixteen, so that we can consider. Yes, and confess in the law. 
I'm just saying from 13 from these tutorials that he's getting from this. <laughs> to say that most respectively, I wish to say no more in respect to the paragraph. May I have some peace here? How many people are in conduct of this child? Listen, listen. Who is in conduct? Listen. But, uh, Jill, yes, Lord Chief, I agree. You have applied to expand yes, paragraph 10 and the paragraph 16. Yes, Lord Chief. Can you read those paragraphs which you intend to expand? Your Lord Chief, paragraph 16 says that. Paragraph 10. <laughs> <laughs> and your Lord Chief, may I take. Note that these paragraphs have been expired. No, I have to explain those paragraphs. That there's no application to expand them. <laughs> the petitioners have credible information that Honorable uh, Rima is a close associate to the proposed deputy president, one Mr. Kidore Kindiki. And that the said judge failed, refused, or neglected to disclose those facts to the parties at the inception. The basis of the application to expunge that particular paragraph is on the basis that the same has been linked to the affidavit sworn in petition 015. Paragraph 16 that Lady Justice Mugambi is conflicted as she should uh, as she should excuse herself as she was uh, Mr. Kedra Kindiki's LLM student at Moy University. You are new LLM program at Moy University. You will have your time to submit, sir. <laughs> And that's why I'm expanding. Good. That's why I'm expanding this paragraph. That is what my client said. A crucial issue that the, that she failed and or refused to disclose to the parties. My client has learned that she was not an LLM there and that she only took her degree in that university. We have lost yesterday to anything being expunged subject to the court observing that if this witness has lied about these two issues, what else has he lied about? Is it issues to be made? I, um, in, a, in a ruling because of a decision has been made and the response is there, but we decline the invitation to expand this paragraph, then we remain as part of the government. We are most obliged. Uh, if you want to address us in the course of the 
as 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 in the last meeting. Is that is that the position? Yes. Okay. Proceed. Um, are you supporting the motion? I'm supporting my land friends. Uh, uh, complaint to the name of the of my land friends. Is it any Thank you very much, uh, to my senior, my lord. Um, I'll take about 15 minutes. Uh, massively, uh, my issues are issues of law. They will not uh, incite uh, any shooting up from my uh, opponents. We should not. My lords, I have my lords in the leadership. I have submitted some um, two uh, cases. The first case is the case of Standard Chartered Financial Services and another versus Manchester Alfitas. I don't know to have that with you. And the second is a case called Nabin Frenjikarai versus the United and others. In the case of Standard Chartered Financial Services Limited versus Manchester Alfitas, and this remains, as far as I'm aware, the first case where the Court of Appeal reviewed a judgment, a concluded judgment, set it aside and valued. And the only question before that court that uh, led it to this decision was the question of bias. Uh, I invite your, my lords and your ladies uh, to paragraph one of the decision where the court says as talks in trying to frame the seriousness of the issue. And I'm reading from the second line. It is a rare application in which the applicants seek to have the judgment of this court to be opened, be examined, declared analogy, set aside, and the appeal had fresh. I invite you now to go to paragraph nine. We've done back to back a photocopy, but if you look at paragraph nine, in the middle is um, in uh, bold the words just Bill, Singh Rai, and two others, but the Stalo can't sing Rai. And the court is saying what it held. And it says this. Um, during the pendency, my lord, and the relationship are you there? Uh, in the middle of paragraph nine. During the pendency of the applicant's motion and the respondent's primary objection, this court in a five judge bench decision in just Bill, and I they give the whole case there, held it earlier, that it was only mandated to hear and determine appeals from the High Court and could not revisit its own previously concluded decision, nor did it have powers to reopen and rehear a finally concluded matter. In light of the decision in the right case, it was deemed appropriate that since this matter raises similar issues, it be similarly had by a five-judge bench, hence the unusual composition of this bench. They are merely underlining the importance of the matter the court is dealing with. Permit me now, your leadership and my lords, to invite you to paragraph 63, where the question that vexes you this afternoon is dealt with. At paragraph 63, they deal with a case which we've also supplied the court and my friends with. It's a well known case of um, um, Senator Agostino Pinochet. But at paragraph 63, this is what they say Bias, whether it is perceived or actual, undermines the public confidence in a judicial officer's ability to dispense justice. They then cite a caption by Lord Job in uh, R versus Gov. Justice must be rooted in confidence, and confidence is destroyed when right-minded people, the right-minded people that Mr. Deva was talking about, go away thinking the judge was biased. At paragraph 65, the case of Webb versus Queen, in considering the merits of the <coughs> test to be applied in a case where a jury is alleged to be biased, it is important to keep in mind that the appearance as well as the fact of impartiality has been done. And this is what they say in paragraph 6. And this, my lord, and your leadership, is what I will be researching this court to find a favor with when you retire. To your the rule against bias is as important an element of the right to a fair trial. 
this rule, and now this is our own five judgment saying this is called okay. This rule is to be very strictly applied so that even the appearance of bias is done away with. The appearance of it. This is because it aids in public confidence in the fairness and impartiality of the judicial system. In view of the jurisprudential importance and uniqueness of this application, they then cite a case called R vs. Sussex. Justice should not only be done, but should manifestly and undoubtedly be seen to be done. The, I, I will leave for you to read paragraph 67, which I also recommend to you. And then paragraph 71, another English case cited. First, actual bias will of course always disqualify a person from sitting in public judgment. Even in the absence of actual bias, however, the importance of public confidence in the, in the administration of justice is such that even the appearance of bias will disqualify. And we say emphasis added. And I would also invite you to look in the fullness of time to paragraph 73 and 74. Paragraph 81, they cite the case um, um, cited uh, earlier, I think I mentioned it. This is the case of uh, Agostino Pianchet. It actually begins at paragraph 80. There's a long passage, I'll not read it on account of time. But at paragraph 81, they cite the basis for the reason the two applicants before you have moved. It's the Latin phrase, nemo debet esse judex in propria cosa. No man is to be a judge in his own cause. Then at paragraph 82, Lord Hope in the same decision. Indeed, it may be said of all the various tests which I have mentioned, including the maxim, that no one may be a judge in his own cause, that they are all founded upon the same broad principle, where a judge is performing a judicial duty, he must not only bring to the discharge of that duty an unbiased and impartial mind. He must also be seen to be impartial. Having considered all those, the court, and in, in, in that case, what the issue was, was that the late Justice Laka had been presented on the parties previously, not in this matter, but previously. But at paragraph 86, they give uh, a summary of what I've told you, and then go to paragraph 88, and then this is how the court finally resolved the matter. Um, and I would also recommend to you paragraph 90. Let me read paragraph 90 before going to the conclusion. The mere probability, the mere probability or appearance of bias was enough to breach the cardinal rule of fair trial in the administration of justice. Having raised the issue of bias arising from the same circumstances in the hearing of an interlocutory application by the same judge in a matter involving the same parties, we do not understand why the applicant's counsel failed to raise the issue during the civil appeal. That omission of its standing, the seriousness of the bias, of the issue of bias, cannot be underrated. As observed in the Benjo case, bias is one of the grounds that would justify reviews, review of a previous decision of the Court of Appeal. And I say, this was the first time it's ever happened in the history of the Court of Appeal, and as far as I'm aware, the only time it has happened. So in paragraph 25 is what the court says. Accordingly, we allow this application, declare that there was a failure of justice in the judgment listed for October 2002, and we accordingly invoke the court's residual jurisdiction to correct that injustice by reviewing the judgment and setting aside with all the consequential orders. Now, my learned friend, Mr. Kibbe, has referred you to a passage that my good and learned friends uh, the respondents insisted must be read. And this is a question of um, the attendance of a wedding where gifts are shared by a judge who, um, the gifts are received by a judge by a party who is before this court. We are before this court because the first petition was impeached in the Senate. The speaker of that Senate is a party in this case. In the document presented by Mr. Kibet, the speaker describes the judge, and there's nothing wrong with uh, having friends, as I should say, let me say this. He says, my long time friend, this is what he says. Now we found a decision, and I've shared it with you, this is a case of Nabi, where on all fours, a similar situation occurred. And I invite the court now to look at paragraph 70, and allow me to read this, because I won't be reading anything else after I read this. This is what the court, this is, I said, is um, Nabin, uh, right, versus um, Virunta Limited I believe to I say paragraph 30, please forgive um, 
the declaration of the authority. And this is a 2022 decision. So both the both the um, Standard Charter case and the case before you were determined under the current constitution. And as I'll be demonstrating here, they also took into account the Judicial uh, Code of Conduct. I'm reading from paragraph 17. In this matter, the third respondent declined to recuse himself. This was a matter of an advocator, appointed under Article 159. Declined to recuse himself on the basis that the relationship between him and the counsel for the first and second respondents was a professional one. This court, however, takes judicial notice of the fact that in the Kenyan context, invitations of colleagues to weddings is extended to those that one considers close, and such invites are not extended to all and sundry. Had that been the case, then the third respondent could have as well extended the invite to the council for the applicant who is an advocate just like him. <coughs> Given the circumstances, this court arrives at the inevitable conclusion that apart from being a professional colleague, the third respondent and counsel for the first and second respondents are friends. And that is the perception that any reasonable, objective, informed member of society would reach based on the circumstances of this case. I continue in paragraph 21. As counsel for the applicant stated, it is common knowledge that there is a custom for invited guests to give gifts at a wedding, exactly as happened in the case Mr. Kibe showed you. In this case, apart from the third respondent and the counsel for the first and second respondents, the applicants and their counsel will never know if the counsel for the first and second respondents was a gift-bearing guest at the traditional wedding or not. In this case, we know, because the photograph depicts a gift. It, however, boils down to the failure by the third respondent to disclose to the applicants and their counsel that he intended to invite the counsel for the first and second respondents to his traditional wedding and seek their views on the same. I need to emphasize that the real issue here is not that a wedding was attended. It is that that issue was not disclosed prior to the hearing and dismissal of an application in this matter and the continued conduct of this proceedings. I continue. Bearing in mind the final nature of arbitral awards, which can only be set aside upon a litigant satisfying the conditions stipulated under uh, Section 35 of the Arbitration Act, the need for disclosure becomes even more critical. Paragraph 72. In S versus Roberts, the court stated that the apprehension be that of the reasonable person in the position of the litigant and that is based on reasonable grounds. I continue at paragraph 73. The counsel for the first and second respondents has stated that since he and the third respondent are arbitrators who have served at the Chartered Institute of, of Arbitrators, Kenya Branch, as chairman and vice chairman of the institute respectively, during the same tenure, they were bound to interact or have interacted in the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators events, trainings, board meetings, and members' welfare gatherings were discharging their professional mandate. I do agree that the above events are professional in nature. However, Weddings are personal events where families, friends, and close colleagues are invited. The lack of disclosure by the third respondent that he had invited the council for the first and second respondents to his traditional wedding is one that leads to the perception of bias. Due to the failure to so disclose on the part of the third respondent, it has led to an erosion of the confidence that applicants have that he will be neutral when it comes to the hearing and determination of the eventual proceedings before him involving the parties here. In conclusion, this court holds that there was lack of transparency on the part of the third respondent, and he should have done the honorable thing when he was requested through an application to uh, challenge to recuse himself from the arbitral proceedings in nature. This court finds that the just, justice justifiable doubts have risen as the third respondent's impartiality and independence and the same have been proved by the applicants. This is a decision, and the only one we could find that addresses on all fours the issue that confronts these courts. I ask this court to find favor with this decision, to recuse itself, and I say, and I do so with tremendous, tremendous respect. It's just that the nature of the matter, the nature of the issues, and the perception are such as are captured in that decision. Recusal is the only thing that will do justice um, not only to the African before you, but to the court itself. Thank you for the privilege of your attention.
for the time. Unless you have any questions, I'll just start asking. The moment you say to him, or yeah, to him, I would like you not to hear this matter. I want you to repeat yourself. His response was, okay, Halima, if you don't want to meet me in this case, let another talk. That is the attitude. That is the attitude. <coughs> Those of us who have had the advantage of receiving higher education know when you are giving introduction to philosophy, you are taught that perception, the part of the test is perception and reality. Perception and reality. When you're coming to perception is a very important concept when it becomes the arena of politics. Reality may be completely different. And indeed, I believe it is different in the case of the logic. I appear before you very often. I will never entertain any idea about your standing in relation to justice. But the perception now that has been painted by my able line of defense crime. Is a different view, effective, and utilitarian. That there is a physical portion of the Kenyan population <coughs> which will not be happy to hear you <coughs> sit and listen to this case at all. And may I remind you, Lord, she's very respectful. In this room is all the of the country. There's no way you can move away from that at all. I would respectfully invite you to a book. I've taken the trouble to read. Yona, sorry for the interruption. We are muted again. Perhaps it could be unmuted so that we follow the proceedings. I wonder why it has happened in respect of the community. <laughs> 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 Can I speak now? Can I speak? Yes. 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 Jonah, 
Det er der god piger, politik og præsentation i bilen. Politik og præsentation i bilen. I'll take in the subject during the weekend to read this book. Impeachment is politics of the country. There's no way you can remove it from the politics of the country. And that's why I'm saying very, very shortly. That as you have been told, there are some people who feel very strongly that it's in the United States. It's not just for you to remain in the case when other people you want to be here to take the vote. Bear in mind you, my thoughts, we are hearing in people who take it, advocates to be able to think broadly and bring to the notice the culture of the people that we are. It is a little song that is it's a song that is sung by a little child in Kenya. Those of us who listen to the Kenyan radio may have heard of it. He says in the Swahili, Kenya means the award to our TV to the world. He says very beautifully, Kenya means the award to the local. Now when I talk about keeping the door open, you are finding it. Majority of our people are not the people who are in this country. Majority of our people are people who have not had the advantage of receiving the education, the training, the judges, and the advocates to the members who are living today. And as one of my own friends very aptly pointed out, majority of the people believe that the case before you has been engineered by the politics of the country. And if, if some of them believe that your lawsuits cannot hear them, again, I say to you very, very respectfully, you stand to lose much. You better use the case, take other people to hear the case and you continue to maintain the world. My Lord, to so go back to the politics of war, if it should, this matter was part of the national community. National family very overwhelmingly stated that the KBC president it was then referred to the Senate, and the Senate again sent to very <coughs> overwhelming that the British President was guilty and convicted him. Okay. My Lord, the story is that one year in the streets of Nairobi. The story that one hears elsewhere. You can't afford to be near, I don't even know it. Stories that members of parliament were each given hands of money, not of money. That may be so, or may not be so. But it doesn't matter. They have made the point that members of parliament received bribes and they handed down a decision which majority of people believe that it was a corrupt decision. You cannot afford to ignore that. Now, when you go to the Senate, you are told the same thing, that members of the Senate receive money in what is called quite partial, don't you know, quite partial, they receive money from known people. Again, you cannot afford to ignore that at all. Now, when they come to the judiciary, they expect the best. They expect people who are got integrity. They expect people who can hear them and who they cannot suspect at all. But if then they are suspecting some people, whether 
truthfully, whether honestly or not. It is my humble submission, a natural thing as a judge. If I was sitting where the Russians are sitting, I would say, as an I'm walking out. Do not say it is the judiciary that people have got policy in. And I can remind you, Russia is very practicing. It is a judiciary that people of Kenya actually have respect for. It is a judiciary that judges that people think that they can do good effects. When we had programs in the year 2007, it is the judiciary that serves the country. When we had a problem of urgency during the time of President Okuru Kenyatta, and the matter went to the Supreme Court, it is again the judiciary that saved the country. Now, if you find people now are questioning the very institution of the judiciary, it is my humble submission that as a judge, just to say thank you, I'm moving out. That does not necessarily mean that there is something wrong with you at all. And as I said, my Lord, I've spent many years appearing before the Lord Chief with the Justice of all in Mombasa. At no time did anybody ever open his mouth and say to me that, I mean, what, this Justice of all is this, it is, it is, it is. Nobody ever did it. I know to suggest to you, I've had the privilege of appearing before you in many cases. There are cases where you have given me rule. There are cases where you have not given me rule or the support. But at no stage did I ever entertain an idea that there is something wrong with that. We have confidence in all of you. But now we have this concept of perspective. There are some people who feel very strong that the Ashish of all of us is out. The Ashish of all of us is out. I let the judge, may I say, I'm letting you have not speaking against you. I'm one who has fought for rights of women. And I kept on shouting very loudly that you want women to get this. And I won't have the fortune of appearing before you very often. I will do it. Sorry, my memory is letting me down. <laughs> but my Lord, may I say, I have had the opportunity of appearing before you. And may I say this most, my Lord, if you go and check the Social Service Commission records, you will not find a single letter from John Kaminwa complaining against any judge. I have never done such a thing at all. It's because I've got confidence in our judges. I've got confidence in our magistrates, magistrates that they live by justice. But I'm just saying you, my lords and my legend, if at this time we have some people who feel very <coughs> strongly in the camp because they, they may not get justice before you at all, please walk out. Don't continue here with you. And indeed, the people who are saying that your lordship or my lady should not hear me, this case, when they are speaking, you cannot really criticize them. They have got some valid complaints. My lord, United States of America, which I had the opportunity and the privilege of respecting and studying their jurisprudence. They gave me additional legal education. The United States of America, which has an impeachment provision that like came for 200 years, there is no president or deputy president 